the moment that RVing changed our lives. Welcome to the very first podcast of RVing with Joe and Kate. We figured this would be the perfect topic to kind of introduce you to the podcast, who Joe and Kate are, and really kind of our backstory. And at the end of this, we'll kind of get into why we're doing the podcast and what you can expect from it. So welcome, welcome to our very first episode. I'm very excited. So am I. So I'm going to start with you because neither of us have told each other what that moment was that changed our lives in our being. So I'm really curious to hear what your moment is. And it doesn't have to be one moment if you have multiple, but. Okay. So I'll start with the first moment <laughs> and maybe we can work to the other moments. Uh, my first moment with regards to our being and how it kind of changed my life and it than our lives is Mother's Day weekend, 2014. It's Saturday. We're sitting at home. And I should clarify, this is a year and a half before we hit the road, before we had an RV. Yes. So we're sitting at home and we happen upon a movie called We're the Millers. And the gist of it is this guy who's a like small time drug trafficker decides to create a fake family and travel in an RV down to Mexico to make his drug run. And somehow that movie left an impression in me of, hey, we could load up our family. So the two of us are dogs at the time and travel around the country in an RV. And there's something about that movie that left a seed about RVing in my mind. Because I grew up camping all throughout the Sierra Nevadas in California. And I know there were plenty of RV campers around me, but I was very focused on tent camping at the time. And never had I ever even considered RVing up until that moment we watched the movie together. Oh, I see. So that moment of watching that movie is what planted the seed because later that afternoon we went over to Kate's uh, parents' house and I don't know how in-depth Kate wants me to get with this story if you want to add some more details. But in short, she was having a rough day. Um, her boss, or you tell the story. Mother's Day weekend, um, we decided Saturday we would spend with my parents and then Sunday you would spend with your mom. And that day, I was ha just all things kind of aligned where I was having a really rough day with regards to work. And finally that evening, I just, I hit a breaking point and I, I looked at Joe and I said, let's just sell everything, buy an RV, hit the road with the dogs and travel. Yeah. And her father and I are sitting on the couch watching TV together and we both look at her and we're like, you're crazy. And it went back to watching TV. It wasn't until later that night that Kate, um, or I was leaving to go to my mom's and Kate stopped me and said, can you seriously think about this? I wasn't joking. And on the ride home, I started thinking about it. And something my father told me was um, right before he passed away, I asked him if he had any regrets in life, any like last minute pieces of wisdom he wanted to pass along. And he thought about it for a minute and he looked at me and said, take risks and have a lot of children. He wished he had taken more risks in life and had more kids. Um, we're not planning on having kids. No. But that in that moment, I was thinking about it and I was like, you know, this is one of those times in life that is a risk, a huge risk, but let's do it. So I called Kate up and I told her. Yeah. And the rest is kind of history. We, what, we started what planning for about a year. Mm-hmm. So the, the initial idea, once Joe came on board to this full-time RV life, was we were going to do it for a year, try it out, and kind of take a break, hit the reset button on our hectic life um, that we need, really needed a change. So we're planning, shopping, like figuring out what is this RVing thing all about? Because neither of us have ever RV'd a day in our lives. And we've essentially went full commit on this plan to full-time RV for at least a year. Yep. 
So that's your moment. Um, well, that was the the movie kind of was the first moment that led to all of that. Okay. So I'll let me t- I'll tell my moment, yes. and if you have more, we can get into that. I would say my moment was a month into our trip. Okay. It, our th- once we hit the road. Once we hit the road, okay. so we hit the road in September, and 2015. 2015. And about a month later, we were at a point where like the honeymoon was over. So there is this period of, I would say, a week between when we quit our jobs and when we actually left. And that was one of the most glorious weeks of my life because we'd quit our jobs. We had no jobs on the horizon. We had money saved up in the bank for this year that we were supposed to spend on the road traveling the country. And there was absolutely no, no worries, no, well, not worries, but no commitments, nothing that had to be done. It was kind of like when you were a kid and it was that first day you're walking out of school for summer break (laughs) and you don't have homework or anything. You just know you're about to enjoy the entire summer and it's so relaxing and free. Then we got on the road. (laughs) And I would say the honeymoon on the road probably lasted like three, four days of us just relaxing and enjoying. And to me, I had been at my company for 10 years and I thought this was just going to be like a giant vacation (laughs) for a year. Well, a couple of days after we start, Kate here um, starts wanting to get on her laptop and go to like the local coffee shop to work. And I'm like, well, okay, well, I guess I'll go with you if you want to use Wi-Fi because we had started a blog to kind of keep up, help family and friends keep up with what we were doing. And we would go to the coffee shops and I would just hang out and be on my phone, surfing the internet, whatever, just relaxing, enjoying a cup of coffee while Kate was busy typing away. Well, fast forward to about a month in and Kate and I are getting in all these arguments about nothing. So it might be like I hung the dish towel up wrong or she did something and we would just be getting in these arguments for no reason. And I was thinking to myself, you know, if this continues on, I don't want to continue RVing. This kind of sucks. <laughs> um, and we were up in Pagosa Springs. We're driving out of Pagosa Springs toward Durango, Colorado. And... Kate asked me to take a photo as we're going down the road because it was this, you know, gorgeous mountain view. And I take the photo. She wants me to post it on Instagram. I have no interest in posting it on Instagram. I just kind of go back to what I was doing. And she gets upset with me. And I know she's upset because she won't talk to me. The silent treatment. Yes. For the next hour and a half, two hours, whatever it was, Kate was driving the RV. In my recollection, it was a little bit shorter than that. But. <laughs> it was a while. Anyway, we, she doesn't talk to me the entire time, even though I'm asking her what's wrong, nothing. And we get down to kind of the bottom of the hill and Kate just pulls over into a rest area. Um, we go to the bathroom. Kate comes back and says, we need to talk. I said, okay, yes, we do need to talk. And she says, but not here, the RV. We need to go over there. And it's to where they had the picnic tables and stuff. And I said, "Uh uh-oh, here it comes. Uh, Long story short, basically what it was, was Kate and I were on different pages. We were, I was in vacation mode and Kate was more in work mode. She was upset because I wasn't interested in working. And the reason for that is, Kate had gotten to a point where she wanted, she had realized that this lifestyle was great. You you didn't want to go back to corporate life, right? I would say very quickly once we hit the road full time, I just fell in love with the freedom and the flexibility of RV life. And a year was not going to be long enough. And I think for me, it was less of a hey, we're going to take a year off and travel full-time in RV around the United States with our dogs and turn in more to a new lifestyle, a new way of looking at life. And this feeling of being in more control and really truly living the life that I wanted. 
And my brain immediately switched to, okay, we love this. How do we keep this going for as long as we want to? And the the limiting factor at the time was money because we had planned to be able to do this for a year without any income. And so the back of my mind is going like, okay, we can cut costs, like look at ways to earn an income on the road. And how do we make this work so that we can keep going? Yeah. But the thing is, Kate didn't share any of this with me. This was just kind of in the back of her head. And here I am on vacation mode because I was like, that's what this year is. Why are we going to like, why bother posting to a blog or an Instagram account? I'm like, sure, our friends can follow us, but I really don't care. <laughs> um, I just want to relax and just just let me do my thing for a year. Well, when we sat down, Kate finally explained all of this to me. And I was like, you know, I feel the same way. Mm-hmm. I don't want to go back to like a job. Or let me rephrase I don't want to go back to kind of the corporate lifestyle that we we had been living before, which was, you know, you get up in the morning, you go to work, you spend all day at work, come home, sit down, you know, maybe watch some TV, have dinner, hang out for a couple hours, go to sleep, and then, you know, rinse and repeat. Just do that over and over again. And the only real time the two of us had together was, you know, really that couple hours at night. And even then that was just spent decompressing from work. And then time over the weekends. And even then we were still on our phones and working remotely and trying to, you know, get stuff done. So I wanted to be able to spend time with Kate, our dogs. I wanted to be able to live the life that we wanted to. And hearing Kate say all of this and like, hey, maybe we can make an income and kind of offset our costs and stay on the road longer and all of these things. I was like, all right, you know what? I'm in. And it was that moment for me with RVing that really changed my life because it made made the whole process that much more, that's the wrong thing. It, It changed me because it was that moment where I was like, we can make a change in our lives to live the lives that we want. And ultimately what ended up happening was we started the getting really serious with the website. Mm -hmm. That was first. And then we started the YouTube channel and got the YouTube channel going. And that's really when things started to kind of take off for us. Um, We had talked about doing a YouTube channel before we even hit the road. And on my very last day of work, Kate filmed me and it was an absolute like train wreck. It was (laughs) just not working out for me. Um, So we said, yeah, let's never do that again. And here we are. I had a good guess that would be your moment Mm -hmm. because I know that especially that rest stop in Colorado, I think left a very deep impression or impact on you with regards to our relationship. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was also a moment where I was like, this might be where we break up because things were not going well. No, they weren't. And I think the mo- like in thinking about the topic for this episode, which is the moment that RVing changed our lives, it very well could have gone the other direction, which is we're no longer together and there is no we're the Russo. Exactly. <laughs> it's a you're the Russo <laughs> or I'm a Russo. Well, I don't, I mean, we, we definitely would not have had the YouTube channel, the website, anything else. I think we would have gone our separate ways, sold the RV and figured things out from there. Yeah, and I think we could go probably do a deep dive on a separate episode of the impact that RVing has on relationships with around with the people that you're traveling with, Mm -hmm. right? Like how kind of similar to the talks that we've done around, like, how do you thrive and survive as a couple in a small space, whether it's a big RV or a small RV, because we've been in all, all different types of RVs. Um, Like thinking back to our very first RV in 2015, when we hit the road full time, we had a class A motorhome towing a Jeep Wrangler with two dogs. And then we downsized to a class B RV on the ProMaster chassis with one dog. Mm -hmm. And then that morphed into kind of testing out different types of campers, 
like a small class C to then going full time, just the two of us in a pop up truck camper, and now back to a van and no longer traveling full time in an RV, but doing it part time. So I feel I feel like we've we've experienced quite a range of the different gamut. types of RVing. The only thing we haven't tried for long term is a tow behind, like a fifth wheel, a travel trailer, or like a little, little teardrop. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, with the type of RVing that we've done now for so many years, I feel like it is such a strong part of my identity now. Like every time I think about traveling, even internationally, I think about, hey, could we rent a camper? Because I love RV life so much, the convenience of it. It's just, it's really changed the way I look at travel. Now, going back to the beginning of this, there was your one moment. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other significant moments throughout our RV travel that stand out to you that changed your life? I, th- I think they've all changed my life. <laughs> the, the, there have been so many key moments in RVing, um, from switching campers to like, just realizing what RVing brings to my life. I know it's different for everybody, but I think going back to... 2015, before we even hit the road full time in the RV, we took the RV, we did a weekend test run. So we packed up the RV, the dogs, and we got this epic beach camping spot in Ventura, California, California. And we parked our RV right along the beach, open the door and walk right onto the sand, go swimming in the ocean. Like that moment will be the most impressionable moment for me because that to me was the ultimate RV experience. And we that was our first trip out in an RV. Yeah. And then we followed that up with first day of hitting the road full time, driving to a winery in California, parking on the vineyard, mm-hmm. going for a wine tasting, coming back to the RV, cooking a meal, sleeping at the vineyard. It's just those moments always stick with me because they were my first experiences with RVing and they were amazing. <laughs> they always, I mean, RVing hasn't always been amazing, but those moments uh, really changed my life because I know that RVing can offer that kind of moment for me and I love it so much. Those were good times. Yeah. That was those were the uh, the honeymoon days. I mean, we wait, have, are you saying we don't have honeymoon days anymore? No, we have we have plenty of amazing amazing times on the road, and yeah, I, I would say those are very impressionable. Uh, there was one the very first time we, despite uh, or beyond just driving the RV back from the dealership when we first bought it, there is the one instance where we had, it was parked in the driveway of our home. We were selling our home and we decided we would move into the RV and live out of it. Well, we didn't have any sort of uh, hookups at home. So when the gray and black tanks filled up, we had to go to a local dump station to dump it. Well, we decided to take the dogs with us. Kate was going to follow behind in our Jeep. I was going to drive the RV with the dogs so they could kind of get a feel for it. That was a disaster. (laughs) We pulled out of our little cul-de-sac. And as soon as I made a right-hand turn onto one of the main streets, all of a sudden, all of the drawers and everything flew open because we forgot to make sure they were locked in place. Um, The Once all that noise and everything happened, the dogs freaked out. I had Leo or Husky crawl (laughs) under my legs where, you know, obviously the gas pedal and brake pedal and everything, he's down there. And our 80 pound Belgian Malinois Duke jumps in my lap. And here I am trying to drive down a major street in Los Angeles in a 30 foot class A motorhome. 
I just stopped. I put the hazards on. Kate jumped out to see what was going on. I had her take the dogs, took a moment to put everything away, and then we drove to the um, thing. The next time the dogs were in the driving down with the RV was when we went to that beach camping spot. Mm -hmm. And that that experience led us to create a pre-departure checklist of making sure the drawers are locked and everything else in between so that we're ready to go when we hit the road. So so I think that's kind of a good lead in to kind of what people might want might expect from RVing with Joe and Kate. The podcast. Is really sharing our experiences from full time RV life to now part time RV life and the people we've met along the way and like the knowledge that we've gathered and sharing that with all of you. Yeah. I think going back to what Kate said is aside from towables, we've been in virtually every other type of RV um, and we would like to try a towable at some point, but we've had all the experiences. We full-timed for six and a half years. We continue to travel in RVs. We've done it overseas. We have a lot of experience that we would like to share with you, but I think on top of that, with all of the time that we've spent in and around the RV industry, we've made a lot of great friends at a lot of companies and um, things out there related to RVs that we would like to have those people come on and share their expertise with you. If there are topics and things, let us know down in the comments below um, what those might be. You know, what things would you like to see out of this podcast? Are there topics you want us to cover? Um, certain people you want us to try and talk to about RVing and what it's like and everything else. I'm really excited about the podcast. I know this is something that Joe has wanted to do for years, probably over five years. That's, that sounds about right. I rem Probably from the first podcast we were invited to be on. It's, it's definitely it been longer than five years. <laughs> I think it's it's been almost eight. Wow. Eight years. Well... It's happening. It is happening. <laughs> I never I never did plan to do in a uh, video podcast. So this will be a video and audio podcast. If you're interested in the audio portion of it, you'll be able to find it, I think, on most, if not all, uh, podcast hosting platforms. And, and obviously here on our channel on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yeah, And we'll... we'll kind of do show notes and everything too on the website so you can easily find the different episodes. Mm -hmm. But this will be um, an exciting journey. So I, I have a question for Joe. What what do you find most enjoyable or the thing that you like the most about RVing? Ooh. I would say that changes over time. When we first hit the road during that honeymoon phase, it was just the, like being able to relax, being away from things. But at the same time, while traveling, you have your home and all of your stuff with you. Mm -hmm. I think for me, that's been one of the key things in RVing. And, you know, we get a lot of, I've seen a lot of comments on our YouTube channel in that when we mention the cost of an RV, we're doing a walkthrough and inevitably there will be people who pop in and say, well, for the cost of that, I could do X amount of days flying and staying out of hotels and everything else. And I agree with that. You absolutely could. But the difference is when you're RVing and what I found and what I love about it is when you go from one place to another, when you fly, you go to the airport, you get up in the air, you fly over everything and then you land. When you drive, you get to see everything that's in between. We found a lot of amazing places during that drive. And we, unless we absolutely have to get somewhere for um, a reservation or something we have, which we try not to do, we can take our time. And a perfect example was the first time we went to Flagstaff, we drove through and it was just supposed to be, I think for a night, we ended up spending 10 days there because we just so enjoyed the town. And we've seen a lot of places like that throughout the years where 
even if we don't stay for an extended amount of time, we get to really see and experience that place, which is something you don't get when you're flying. And then, of course, there's the hotels. Hotels are great, but at the same time, I like having all my stuff with me, having our own bed, having our own pillows, and being able to overpack. I mean, when we were living full time, we had everything with us. We had our winter clothes with us, our summer clothes, our hiking shoes, our flip flops, it, it, everything. So whatever you felt like wearing or doing that day, you were equipped for it. And you had your snacks and you had your kitchen and you know, all of your stuff. You don't get to do that when you're traveling by plane to a hotel and everything else unless you're bringing massive amounts of luggage with you. And even then, you can't even bring that amount of stuff. And I've told Kate, it's difficult for me to travel now via plane because in my head, I'm thinking, okay, you have to remember everything you need to bring with you. You have to plan it out and you're not going to bring, be able to bring everything that you want to, but you can in an RV within reason, of course. Yes. And I think what I love about it is we can also tailor the RVing experience around what we want to do. So there was a... A period of time when we had our truck camper and we could go off-roading out in the middle of nowhere which is something we couldn't do when we were in our class a motorhome and we could kind of pick and choose the lifestyle that we wanted to live at that time so does that answer your question it does it makes me giggle because i remember your mom telling me a story about how you had this blanket that you like to take everywhere with you and that lends itself so well to RV life because you get to have your blanket, your pillow, mm -hmm. all your little comforts. Yeah. When I was a kid, I always wanted to, I always asked my parents why I couldn't bring my bed with me. <laughs> well, now you can. Yeah. See, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. Now for you, since you are a big foodie, always have been, mm -hmm. what... Like what things with RVing have really changed you in those ways? Like being able to see new foods, new cultures, new sorts of things. Well, that, that's a... That's Even a, cooking. RVing has... Well, RVing definitely changed the way I cook. Um, because going from a house to a class A RV, which is fairly large, to what we have now... Uh, you have limited space in terms of how much cooking equipment and gadgets you can bring. And so being more creative and, you know, finding like multi multi-purpose cooking tools that can be used for a variety of things. And now that we're part-time, I get to have, you know, the, the full ovens and the more cooking gadgets. Uh, I feel like I'm more efficient with my cooking. Mm -hmm. of, hey, what's the least energy draw to make this and, you know, make it well? And how can I make multiple things or one pot meals without having 10 pots out there to make one dish? So more efficient, but more just different. Cooking is different now. I want to go back to your big moment of our, how RVing changed your life. I think... That is also a very big moment for me because I was very much a part of that rest area conversation and kind of the things that, that got us there. And that moment, I think, really changed the way I, I communicate with you mm -hmm. in the sense that it made me realize more I'm not communicating well and... I can't expect you to read my mind. So how do I better communicate how I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, but also figuring it out for myself first. And I think that moment has made our relationship so much stronger because we did make it through. Yeah. And we're still here together. You know, we just celebrated being together 18 years and yeah, I think things could have gone the other direction they could very have. quickly. Um, speaking of the other direction, have you had any negative 
moments on the road that have really impacted you? Oh, negative moments. And uh, this can be a negative moment that impacted you in a positive way. Mm-hmm. With regards to RVing? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna, I have to think about that one for a moment. Do you have something that comes to mind for you? Well, I think that big moment you just referred to was kind of a mix for me because there was a lot of negative rolled into that with how um, we were around each other. Because mm-hmm. I think when we sat down and talked, what I brought up was the fact that, you know, we can't be in this RV, this small space together 24-7 if you're not going to talk to me. Um, I also brought up the fact that it seemed like you and I had been arguing a lot. And the stuff leading up to that was very negative for me. Mm -hmm. I can't think of any real like negative moments. Like I don't think you and I have not had a lot of bad moments on the road. I mean, there there are definitely days where things are difficult. Mm -hmm. We might be like in a bad place. We're not, we wake up on the wrong side of the bed. We might have a little argument or something, but Outside of that, everything has been very good. Mm -hmm. The only, you know, we've had moments on the road where things have kind of changed the trajectory of where we were going and what we were doing. I think one of those moments was my motorcycle crash. Oh, yes. Back in 2019. And I I would consider that a very negative moment as well as shortly, not too long thereafter, my backpack getting stolen, which had for those who, I don't know if we ever really talked about this much in a video or anything else, but we were traveling to go look at an RV we were considering buying. And it was late at night. We were on a train uh, from the airport into town. And I, well, I can't really say it was stolen. It was my fault. I left my backpack behind on the train. Quickly realized it turned back around and the backpack was gone. In that backpack was passport, cash. Um, there was our my laptop with all of our like hard drives and backup files and everything else. And all of that stuff was gone. And that really kind of impacted both of those events, which were very close together, the motorcycle crash and the backpack kind of impacted our trajectory of like our lives and what we were doing. Mm -hmm. And I think it changed the way it probably changed the RV that we were going to get. It changed some of the different things that we were going to do. And even though at the time that felt like a very negative thing, it really made a lot of positive impacts on our lives and looking at some of the things we were doing, the RV we were considering buying and a lot of other stuff. Cause that, that put us in a, obviously a very bad mental space when we went to go look at that RV. And I think neither one of us, we probably, we were going there to buy the RV. Mm-hmm. Um, luckily I'd kept the cashier's check in my pocket, not my bag. Um, but that said it was, we probably would have bought the RV. That would have been our next RV. And I don't think it would have been the thing that we wanted or the thing that took us to the, or changed our lives in such a way like the truck camper did. 2019 was quite a, quite a year for us. Very transformative year. Yes, very. And then follow that up with 2020 taking delivery of our truck camper that we built for Alaska travel. And we all know what happened in March of 2020 that changed a lot of people's lives around the world. That moment also probably was the beginning of leading us to where we are today, part-time RV travelers with a home base. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at the time we were full-time in our truck camper that we had just taken delivery of January of 2020. As Kate mentioned, we were planning on going up to Alaska. We were also planning on shipping that out to South America and going around South America. And with COVID, we couldn't do that. When things start shutting down, especially right after the pandemic kind of really hit, 
a lot of the services that we and many other RVers use were shut down. And those being like RV parks and campgrounds weren't allowing people to come in or they were just closed. Um, all the gyms and things we use for showers, a lot of those services were no longer available to us. There was talk that they were going to stop or not allow people interstate travel, um, which could have isolated us in one area of the country and all of these different things. It was one of those moments where we said, you know, now is not a good time to be completely reliant on this truck, the camper and what we have around us. We need our own home base. Mm -hmm. And that's when we really seriously turned around and said, I think now's the time for us to start looking. While we had always at some point planned to have a home base again, it was that answered the why. Why get off the road? Why settle down again? And it was really so we could have a place we could call home. And if something ever happened, we always had a place we could come back to. Mm -hmm. Did I, did I kind of nail that? Yes. Okay. You nailed it. One last thing I'll share of how RVing changed our lives, because going back to having a home base now, I feel like the base we have now is not a base we would have ever picked if we didn't experience RV life. In the sense that RVing full time made me realize and reevaluate the things that are important to me, like physical items, but also location. And the thing that I love so much about RVing, especially in the get-go, and the reason we stayed in Flagstaff for 10 days instead of one was this, I loved camping in the forest amongst the trees and being so connected to nature. And all of, like that experience really helped us kind of pick where our base is because I want to be connected to nature. Um, but also reevaluating kind of like what things we need in the base. Mm -hmm. So I think in that sense, RVing also changed my life. Before we even started talking about the RV, we knew we wanted to get out of Los Angeles. And I remember us just looking for homes and around the country and trying to get an idea of what things were like. We always looked in the city. We wanted to be close to everything. We wanted to be in the city you know, if we got jobs or when we got jobs, we would be close to our jobs. We wouldn't be driving in. And now we live out in the country. That's never something we would have done before. And to Kate's point, not only has RVing changed it, but so has this lifestyle. We've been able to kind of create and mold a lifestyle in which we can live where we want to. Once Kate came up with the idea to do this, it's all been about living the life we want. And that's what we've been trying to impart and help with all of you watching and listening to this is what can we do? What resources can we share and how can we help you live the life you want? Like that's that in its entirety, that's what this podcast is all about. Yeah. And I think that is a good place for this to end. Well, I hope you enjoyed that episode of RVing with Joe and Kate, whether you're watching from our YouTube channel or one of those popular podcasting apps out there. If you'd like to get more resources around RVing, head on over to our website at wertherussos.com. For you new RVers out there, we have a guide specifically for the new RVer and where to start, all resources and things like that. If you're a current and experienced RVer, you can find all sorts of things about recommendations on travel locations, campground reviews, and all sorts of other stuff for you. And if you'd like to be notified of new episodes dropping, tips and tricks, and other resources for our viewers, when you do go to our website, wherethrussos.com, make sure you sign up for the newsletter. That's how we'll be sending out all of those updates. If you'd like to learn more about the year and a half that we spent prepping for this life on the road, you can check out my first book, take risks. And if you're looking for more of a taste of the adventures and misadventures of life on the road, check out my second book, Tales from the Open Road. If you're looking for links and things we mentioned during the episode, head on down to the show notes and you'll find them there. If you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe or follow us on whatever platform you're on to make sure you're getting all the new episodes of RVing with Joe and Kate. Thank you again for watching or listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye.